Tonight's show has been brought to you by... One taste of Main Street Cake Shop baked from scratch custom-made cakes and cupcakes and you'll be hooked. Every cake is made to order with only the finest and freshest ingredients. This is no ordinary bakery. Cakes are never pre-made. Main Street Cake Shop is in demand, having provided cakes and cupcakes for numerous prestigious events, bridal fairs, and venues. Owned and operated by April Murray, she has garnered many awards for not only her exquisite cake designs, but also for their incredible taste. If you're looking for a cake for any occasion, or cupcakes in a variety of flavors, then Main Street Cake Shop is the place. Visit them on the web at MainStreetCakeShop.com. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to Tuesday night. This is the Jam and Jukebox radio show, and I am your host, DJ Delpadal. And it is so good to be here tonight, and I tell you, I have been so excited all day because... I have a real treat in store for you tonight. Um, I have someone on the line with me who um, I can actually say I've known for a very long time. And uh, she just happens to be uh, someone who was um, the female lead singer in the very famous R&B group Atlantic Star. And so I'd like to introduce you tonight, Rachel Oliver Hobbin. Hello, Rachel. Hello, Don. How's everybody doing tonight? Well, we're doing great, and I hope that you are. I am. Thank you. Just getting out of a rehearsal, singing praises to the Lord, and so I'm feeling good. Well, you know it doesn't get any better than that, does it? No, it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have been so excited about this ever since um, I asked, would you be on the show, and you agreed, because, you know, I was thinking the other day, I was thinking to myself, you know, as long as I've known you and known what I, I know about you and, and your life, um, there's just still so many questions I have, you know. And so I thought, well, what a great way to, to have you on and just ask you some of these questions about, you know, your time with Atlantic Star and, and some of the other things that you've done because, wow, you have accomplished so much in your life uh, to be proud of for sure. And and I'm just, I just consider myself so lucky and so blessed to know you. Oh, um, Dawn, thank you for saying that. It's a blessing you know, to know you as well and to have seen oh, wow. how you've matriculated through your life so wonderfully well as, as well. Yeah, well, thank you. Well, yeah. you know, I guess we're going to start at the beginning. Um, now, okay. you know, I was, gosh, I watched you in high school, and I thought you were just one of the greatest people. And one of the things I always remembered thank most you. about you was just that enormous smile, just that beautiful smile that you still possess to this day. It's just never changed. It's always the same. And, and um, But you went on from there, and, you know, after high school, college, you became Miss Black America. And uh, and talk about that. How did that all come to be for you? Well, I'll tell you. I was in my freshman year of college, and I knew right then that I wanted to be Miss America. After seeing Vanessa Williams become the first African American to win the pageant, I knew I wouldn't mm-hmm. be the first, but I wanted to be one of many. And it just so happens that summer I found out that I had missed the deadline for the Miss Massachusetts pageant that fed into the Miss America pageant. And my my classmate, uh, who ended up being my roommate sophomore year, says, hey, I heard about a black pageant on the radio, and maybe you should do that. That would be good practice and preparation for the Miss America pageant. And I said, you know what, you're absolutely right, let's do it. Never heard of it before in my life. And I just went over and did the audition and got accepted to be one of the contestants to represent Boston. And I actually won the Miss Black Massachusetts title first. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And from there, they sent me to the Miss Black America pageant, of course, as Miss Black Massachusetts. And that was in Hampton, at Hampton University, over 25 years ago. Mm -hmm. And I don't mind telling how old I am uh, because God has just been incredibly good to me. Uh, My journey has been sweet, starting from winning that competition when I was given the opportunity to speak with girls and boys all around the country and try to make them understand that they, too, could have a wonderful life if they kept God first, if they got a good education, and if they believed that their dreams could come true and come real through preparation and hard work. And so I tried to live by that as well and look at the things that came forth, just having faith and working hard. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, you're... Your life almost, the sun would seem very charmed because everything that you have done, you have been so well blessed. Yes. Um, 
And and that's why it's such an honor to know you and and to say, oh. gosh, I've known her since middle school. I know, huh? Bravo. <laughs> <You know? you. laughs> Broadview Middle, that's right, and then Thomas High. Uh, mm-hmm. but, but you know, it's just it's just um, amazing to watch your journey. I was always an obvious, especially when I when I was oh, you know you. back then, twenty five years ago. Yeah. Um, it, it seems like yesterday now almost. It does, I mean, the way it? time has gone by. But um, but you know, it, I just remember thinking, gosh, I know her. I mean, I know her. I went to school <laughs> with her. How cool is this? Bless you. But then you know? the journey got a little bit sweeter it because did. well. Before we get to the Atlantic Star piece, I mm-hmm. remember reading a headline one time that said that you, um, as part of being black America, you had the honor or you had the privilege of singing with Freddie Jackson. Now, is that true or did I misread that? Luther Vandross. Luther Vandross. Ha, Hi, ha, singing. rest his soul. That was the singingest man to me. I mean, his voice was oh. velvety smooth, and his personality was just effervescent, and I really idolized him. And what happened was, yes, because of my being Miss Black America, I was asked on radio shows, you know, TV shows all across the country, mm-hmm. and he and I had the opportunity to meet up at a radio date. And I, you know, I practically begged him for a job because <laughs> uh-huh. I knew I wanted to be a singer. <laughs> and, you know, Don, it's funny, but I never wanted to be famous. Um, I didn't like the lifestyle of famous people, so to speak, and I'm not putting it yeah. down. I'm just saying it just scared me a little. You know, I'm a country girl from from Burlington, yeah. Graham, North Carolina, yeah. and so yeah. I just wanted to be in the background singing great harmonies and making good music, you know. And I mm-hmm. told Luther, I said, please, please, can I audition for you? I can sing. I was never shy. <laughs> that gave me a great amount of confidence, and I, I did. I just bogarted. I was like, Luther, can I audition for you right here? Because I really would love to be one of your background singers. You know, they dress so elegantly, and oh, they were just class act. And um, he mm-hmm. told me, he said, well, all the people that I sing with, I've grown up singing with since the '60s. They're all my family. He's like, but I tell you what, I'll listen to you sing, and I'll, I'll give you my opinion. And I have to say, I was so pleased with what he said. He said that I had an absolutely beautiful voice, and he felt like it was going to take me places. And that was when mm-hmm. I was Miss Black America. And um, it's just been, you know, so many people that I met through that opportunity as Miss Black America, Gladys Knight, Patti LaBelle, and many others who who would always bless me with, you know, you've got a great voice and, and it's going to take you places. And, you know, we hope to see you on the big stage or on the big screen one day. And all I could say was, God, you know, if it's your will for my life, then I'm ready. Take me there. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Now, and what a beautiful memory that has to be for you that you will have from now on, you know, of that time with, with Luther because, yes. wow. I mean, his, was awesome. um, you know, when he passed, all I could think was, oh, there will be never be another Luther Vandross. Never. You're absolutely and, right. Um, and, and, oh, I mean, who who does not love him? I mean, he just, his I don't music know. is just He's he's a he's a legend, you know. He, he is. was a legend it's, in his time then, and he lives on now. He's a, you know, just a musical icon that will and forever be And the music that missed. he wrote, yes, will live on forever. So though he's not physically with us, we'll always have his spirit through the music every time we hear it. And that's, that's what's so right. great about this thing called, you know, music and artistry and being singers. I mean, we get the great opportunity of leaving lasting memories in people's lives just through singing. And it's just been mm-hmm. a blessing. It really has. Well, you know, I have always said that, that music, and I say it often on the show here, but music is such a universal language to so many because it really doesn't matter, you know, from what walks of life you come from or what nope. what you like as an individual. I mean, music has this beautiful way of bringing people together like nothing else does. It's and, the one um, thing you can count on to do that. Yep. Exactly. That's so, so true. Now, from there, you... Um, you happen to be, you know, you kind of happen to be in a little known band. I think they were called maybe Atlantic Star, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> now true. how in the world? I, this is the question that I've had up through the years, you know, of just saying, oh my gosh, she's in Atlantic Star. But but how did that all come about? Uh, because I was just always like, wow, how in the world? Aside from the fact you have a beautiful voice and you could have been, you know, headlining. You know, stages oh, across the world. Oh, thank you, thank um, you. But you know, it, it, so that was the no-brainer part of it. But you know, how did it all happen for you? Well, you know, as I said, I never really wanted to be like a solo act, like a Michael Jackson or a Madonna. I just never sought that kind of attention, and that you know, whether they sought it or not, I'm not saying it comes with the territory. 
So, you know, if you're out there and you're the headliner, you're going to be grabbed at, pulled on. You know, your life is an open book for everybody, whether it's the truth that's being told about you or not. And I just mm-hmm. I didn't think that. Again, the, the country girl in me just wanted to be able to use her gifts and talents to, to make people happy. And I know that sounds cliche-ish and quite simple, but for me, life has been very simple. It really has. And I just mm-hmm. have always wanted to sing to bring happiness to others. And so I was sitting in the recording studio with one of the many artists that I did background vocals for long before there was a lead vocalist with Atlantic Star. It was Rachel, the background artist, singing on rap <laughs> records and all kinds of stuff, Don. And this man called Richard Dimplesfields, he was a big R&B soul singer back in the 70s and 80s. I was recording on one of his records, and he says to me, he says, you know who you sound like? And I said, who? He said, Sharon Bryant, that girl that's the lead singer for Atlantic Star, and she was girl number one. I idolized Sharon because when Atlantic Star started, Don, we were in mm-hmm. middle school. We were in middle school oh, in 1978, yeah. yeah, and at least I was. You're a little younger than I am. <laughs> and um, <laughs> I much. wanted uh, – that's right, we're right there together. But I that's wanted right. to sound like Sharon Bryant. I mean, she sang like such smooth, just – beautiful love just tone her tone was incredible and she sang this song and it said um here i stand with open arms i'm offering my love to you and i was just like oh my god if i could sound like her well long story short he says you know if they ever look for another girl you you might have to try that thing out it happens that the engineer on dimple's album was a dear friend of mine that's how i got that gig He ended up in Los Angeles. That was in Boston with Temples. He ended up in Los Angeles recording the Love Crazy album for Atlantic Star, for which they had no female lead singer because Mm -hmm. Portia Martin, who was prior to me, had, had left the group. And he calls me up and tells me Atlantic Star has looked at over 700 girls, and they think they're going to just go alone, just be the Lewis brothers. He's like, but I told them they got to hear this one last person. And oh my it turns goodness. out, yeah, Don. It turns out I was the 725th girl that they auditioned. <laughs> oh my gosh! Yeah, it was like a little American Idol back in the day. You know, their own private audition with all these girls. Mm-hmm. And for about three months, they took me through a round of auditions. I was a student at UNCG. You know, minding my own business. But remembering that I had said some six years prior to that that I wish I could sing in a group like Atlantic Star and be like Sharon Bryant. So it came full circle because I kept the yes, pace. Yes, did. I kept preparing my craft and getting better at it, meeting other people, exposing myself. And, my Lord, it happens that they picked me. They picked me out of all those girls, and I was too thrilled. And I sang with them until last year. I had been with them longer than any other girl, uh, 11 wow. years almost. Yeah, yeah. I didn't, and, you know, dream. I did not know that. I did not know that. <laughs> I thought when you, you know, you came off the road and, you know, and you settled down back here in Elements County and, you know, started your family, got married, started your family, that, you know, no more Atlantic Star. I did not know that. So that's a, that would be a neat trivia piece. I Which was with Atlantic Star. Right, was right. was with Atlantic Star the longest. So, that's right. You know, and it was not who you would think it would be, of course. That's exactly so it, right. Wow. I mean, I'm impressed <laughs> by that. That's, that's awesome. And, and, and it only is fitting because, you know, just from knowing you in high school and watching you interact with people, you know, um, it, it, I always said she is going to go on to do great things. I just knew whatever it was, you know. Wow. Um, you, you could have worked in an office and made it look magical. I mean, oh, it was bless just something you. of It was just something about your personality that, you know, you were one of those people that I remember that just everyone loved. You were Rachel Oliver. And, you know, your mom, I mean, gosh, everybody oh, loved your mom. She was the great biology mama. teacher. And I never got to have her for biology, You're kidding by the way. me. You I, never had no, her. I had Coach oh, Massey. Oh, I, I love Coach, Coach Massey, Massey, too. I love Coach Massey. Yeah. Everybody raved about Miss Oliver. And, you know, she I felt good. like I, that was some. You know, you have these things that you look back on of your high school days and you go, gosh, there are things you wish you'd gotten to do. That was one of those things. I had some great <laughs> teachers, as you yes, know. we were blessed. We were very blessed. We were at Cummins at that time. But Miss Oliver, man, that was the one thing I feel like I just missed out on. You know, if I, I, just, I, was if I just had her. Yes, I was her student twice, Dawn. <laughs> 
So why were you her student twice, did I ask? <laughs> well, because I really liked science. I loved animals and all things living. And so I took the gifted and talented biology in 10th grade and then advanced biology instead of physics in the 12th grade. <laughs> I was not going to touch oh. that physics thing. And so, yeah, my mom ended up teaching me twice. But I tell you, uh, that piece of trivia that you were talking about, I was with Atlantic Star from 1991 until 2000 uh, on a regular basis and then for a little bit throughout 2000. And then I decided and they decided that, you know, we'd part ways because I had gotten married, as you said, and I didn't want to be on the road and leave my husband I've been yeah, back in North Carolina. Yeah, I've been back in North Carolina now since 2003. So we started our family, and I've got a big boy and girl now. And I have My to name. say, this, yeah, I'm so. That's the best thing I've ever done is get married and start a family. I, I thank God that He directed me to do it at a time when I wanted to focus on family and you know mm-hmm. raising children. But let me just address what you said about you know, that something special. If I may just tell the world on your show tonight that that something special wasn't Rachel Oliver, but the joy of the Lord that lives in my heart and that has always been in my heart. And Mm -hmm. if you want something special to exude from you, then I just want to recommend Jesus. And that's all I'm going to say about that. Yes, but I well, really and, have and to be know, honest. That's what's made made me feel as though I could do everything that I've ever done was the power of the Lord that lived in me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, he is the reason for everything. And for me, anyway. There, yeah. You know, <laughs> we exist because of him. I mean, that's, that's, right. just, that's the bottom line. And, and <laughs> But I remember, I mean, if, if someone were to ask me and they were to, you know, they were to say, what is your one number one memory of, of Rachel Oliver, I, I would say that smile. Because every time I ever saw you in high school, you had that smile and you loved people. And mm-hmm. it was, you could tell, I mean, you know, in high school, you could tell those it was just kind of a full smile. But you had that sure. really sincere, genuine smile. And you always showed sheer excitement when you would see someone. And you would always, I mean, each individual, and, and you made me feel that way. And I saw you do this with everybody that you interacted with. You always right. made them feel like they were the only person that you, wow. in your in that moment, and uh, even, you know, now on social media and stuff when we interact, I mean, it's the same way I see your interactions. And, and I think to myself, you know, as time goes on, people change. And yep. people, because, you know, life changes you, That's things right. happen. You know, it's just what it is. But I can only right. say you're one of the few people that I've known as long as I have that today you seem the exact same to me as you did yesterday in high school. God bless you. You're you're about to make me just bust out and boo-boo and cry (laughs) and shout and give praise to God because you get it. You get it, and you just don't know how happy it makes me that you get it. There's something bigger than all of us, and and that force makes me want to love everybody and treat everybody right and sing praises and sing good music like Atlantic Star Music because, you know, not everybody knows God, and so those secular songs that I sang with Atlantic Star – they're about love. Atlantic Star, mm-hmm. they're all Christian, you know, brothers. And their mm-hmm. songs were based in Christian love. You know, because when we get married, you know, we're going to share that romantic moment with our special someone. And you need good yeah. music to make you remember it. You yeah, know? exactly. Absolutely. <laughs> and so, so, you know, true. it all that's works so together for good. And, and that's all I've ever been about is making others feel good about themselves, making them feel happy. And I was just blessed with a gift of song and being able to use my vocal talent to do just that. So it's just been a, it's been a blessed life. I, I can't well, it, say anything the thing bad. That, <laughs> the thing that's so inspiring about you is the fact that you've been everywhere. You've been all over the world. You've traveled oh, yeah. to the United States. You've had... Mm-hmm. You've had, you know, some. You've had some of the best experiences a person could ever have, it's and you've met some of the best people in the world. And and you know, and you're you've still re- managed to remain grounded. But I can tell you, from having known your mom and dad mm-hmm. <laughs> for yeah. as long as I've known you, <laughs> they are the foundation. You know, Absolutely. they are they are the reason why. You know, even in the height of your fame and the height of of what you were doing out there in the music yeah. world. Um, you just remain true to yourself. And, you know, That's there's right. not a lot of artists that, um, you know, I can say, especially in today's time, that everything right. is so society-driven. And, it and really people, is. people, you know, and it, it, people get so caught up in so many different things, and there's not too many artists that you can say, that you can look at it and really say that, 
that they are staying grounded and they are staying true. And, and you know, unfortunately, and, it's because of the industry, in my opinion. It, it just yeah. puts so much pressure on you to focus so much on the almighty dollar and making that next big hit like the first big hit. And it's like a machine. Mm-hmm. And and you can mm-hmm. become almost paralyzed by it because you, you can't feel anything other than, what am I going to do next to be big and stay on top? And, and it does. It takes you to a different place. And you can mm-hmm. forget where you started. You can forget who you are because, you know, one in a million gets to be that big. There's only one Michael Jackson, yeah. you know what I mean? That's you know, right. There, there's right. only one group, the Beatles. I mean, so everybody that's, that's striving right. to do that, you you got to realize that might not happen for you. And so what are you left with? Still yourself. You know, right. your fans might go away and all that. So you've got to be content with the gift that you've given the world and, and let mm-hmm. your happiness come from someplace other than just the music business and the industry. But it can bring you yeah. so much joy. It can. <laughs> That's true. And But there's only so much reinvention of yourself uh, right. that you can do. I mean, it, and right. and it's just not something that can continually manifest itself to to utter greatness and that's right. telling, you know, I mean, at some point there's a cutoff. I mean, right. And, I mean, and, look and, at and Britney Spears. <laughs> you yeah, know, I mean, there's a, there's a cutoff. And, and I think people have to realize that what their limitations are, but like you said, also realize that the gifts that they have are, are the gifts that, you know, are to be utilized. But, that's um, right. You know, but if it's held in the right perspective, it's always going to be a great thing. It doesn't. You don't have to be a Michael Jackson to be sure don't. to have greatness in the world. You know, that's exactly um, right. How I'm you having, see yourself is so much more important than how the world sees you. You know, I'm having sometimes. the best time now. Dawn. Exactly, just singing praises in my church. You know, that's that's mm-hmm. what I'm doing now, and I get the occasion to sing. You know, some jazz and even cover some of the Atlantic Star songs still. And I, I get great happiness out of that. But, you know, if I'm never on a large stage again, I'm cool. I'm content with right here in little old Alamance County doing yeah. what I do <laughs> for those who are affected by it. Because still I know, even in my little spot in the world, I'm making a difference. Making a difference. Yeah. And you are, and you have. And Thank I could definitely say you have always been an inspiration to me. I've always looked up to you and, and said, gosh, she's just, I'm, I'm so proud to know her and so thankful that I was able to, you know, in my lifetime, was able to be in the same, you know, high school with you and, and just got to wow. know you on that level long before, you know, the days of just like America and Atlanta. Sure. Star. And, and to come, you know, to see it all come full circle. And today, you know, what? Nearly thirty years later, I say that very yeah. lightly. <laughs> but, you know, nearly thirty there. years later, mm-hmm. we talk, we come around, back around, full circle, and you're still that same loving, bubbly, beautiful human being that you were back then. So, and so you know, are you. So are you. <laughs> well, and the way you've you used your that. gifts to bless the world has always impressed me too. That same smile, you had it too. That's why you could understand this so well because there's something inside of you that lets you know you're special and I want you to know tonight indeed you are. Indeed you are. Uh, well, you're <laughs> you're such a joy. I love talking with you and you um, too. and Thank so you. now I know you're doing a lot of singing with your church and you're you're having rehearsals. Is there a chance that Rachel Oliver Cobbin may release like an a gospel album at some point? Have you ever thought about doing that? I definitely have. And my favorite music is Christmas music. Um, Mm -hmm. I'm so so glad that Christ was born. You know, he came to die for us. He did just that and freed us from this sinful world. And I want to do some Christmas stuff um, to make children, people from 1 to 92 happy. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's it's in the works with some very talented brothers uh, whose studio I happen to be in tonight, uh, Rodney and Greg Milton is whose studio at his home that I'm in. And he's been gracious enough to allow me to use his room to talk to you tonight. But these brothers are incredibly gifted and musicians. Um, they have master's degrees in music and jazz and improvisation. And they're going to do some arranging with me, and we're just going to come up with some really, really interesting ways to interpret and present old Christmas spirituals and classics um, in the next year. And in addition to that, I certainly do want to collaborate with my husband, who is a songwriter, 
I used to work with Babyface and Daryl Simmons and those cats from LaFace Records out in L.A. I uh, worked with him on doing some jazz and R&B stuff because he's a great writer. So, you know, we're, we're in our home studio all the time just putting oh. stuff down on tracks, and we got a ton of stuff that we can actually kind of listen to and collaborate on to get some good stuff out there real soon, we're hoping. I want my kids to both be in school, and my daughter will be five and in kindergarten next year. Oh. And so, yeah, I'm excited that they're growing up and, that, you know, Mommy will have a little bit more time on her hands. So, yeah. Well, I I can't wait till you release Christmas music because I am that is my favorite time of year and your soon we, yeah I've, yes and I've always loved I mean I've always loved the nostalgia of Christmas and what Christmas means and and uh, you know over the the recent holiday season I played you know all Christmas music all through the month of December on my Saturday night show all indie music. And, oh, you know, cool. different indie artists were doing, you know, recreations of, of standard songs that you knew and loved, but it was just so neat and so well That's received. Hot. And so, Good. indeed, if when you get that put out, I definitely want to copy it because I will be glad to play it. I will be proud to play it here on the station. And um, and and so I, I just can't wait because I know whatever you do from here on out, it's just going to be a blessing to so many. And on that note, Thank I did not you. know that your husband also, you know, dealt with music. I, I never knew that, so I've learned something new tonight about you. I did not know. He is an incredible songwriter, trained by the best, Babyface. <laughs> well, it doesn't get any better than Babyface, does I'm it? I'm telling you, not at <laughs> all. I mean, Babyface, Babyface and Luther Vandross in the same conversation. This is just more than I can handle, you know what I mean? <laughs> It's been a good life, Dawn, and I thank you for helping me to share with all our friends out there and fans. I, I really am just glad that you would even think enough of me to have me on. Thank you so much. Well, you're welcome. And before you go, uh, we do have one call on hold, okay. and I'd like to—I have no idea who it is. So, okay. uh, uh, if you don't mind taking that, and Not uh, at we'll all. Just see who's on the line. All right. Hello, this is Jam and G Fox, and you're on with Rachel. Hi, my name is Cameron Cobbin, and I'm the son of Rachel Oliver Cobbin, and I'm seven years old, and my mom is a great singer, so I hope she can make her career better. <laughs> oh, that is so sweet. Hello. How are you, Cameron? Hello. Hi, Hello, Cameron. <laughs> that just made my night. Now, you see, that he's going to make me too. have to go back out there and really put it down. Because he, he's old enough now, and so is my daughter, actually, where they've seen my videos and they've seen the Soul Train reruns and they've uh-huh. seen a song that was on TV One last year and they replayed it this, uh, New Year's Eve. And they're like, Mommy, we want you to do that again. We want to go around the world. They're too cute. Oh, how sweet. I love you, baby. Well, Thanks, sweetheart. Oh, you're such a sweetheart. I'm so glad you called me and said your mommy. That is such a treat. <laughs> mommy, my name is Raina, and you're the greatest singer I ever had in my whole life. I was your courageous brother and brother. Because I love you, and I'm bored, and I, I mean, and I love you around my heart because you made me forgot to be your great singer because I was in your stomach when God made me. Oh, sweetheart, oh I love God. you, too. I love you, too. That was my four-year-old daughter, Raina. Ah, see, I'll tell you what, I could just tell it about that 30 seconds right there. That is a little Rachel right there. That is a she, little she Rachel. She really is. But let me tell you, she's her own woman. She is a little tomboy. She loves sports and all of that, and Mommy's going to let her be the best basketball player or soccer player she wants to be. And if she ever decides she wants to be a beauty queen, we'll go that way, too. But I'm going to let her yeah. be her own person. <laughs> Oh, that is just too adorable. Well, Rachel, I know uh, your kids are, are God, so immensely proud of you and your husband, I'm sure. And it's indicative of what they said just now that, you know, you are instilling some great values within them that your own parents instilled in you, and it's just being carried on into a new generation. And, ah, yeah. they're just going to grow up to be phenomenal human beings, adults, young adults, one day as themselves. Thank you. So Thank you. I, just, I pray that they I will. I see that. Thank so, you. Yes. Well, I more than I more than appreciate you being here tonight and taking time out of your schedule. I know you've been really busy of late, but thank you so much for giving me some time and the fans and the listeners some time just to 
have this moment with you to talk and catch up. It's been wonderful. You got it. It's my pleasure, and I want to thank you publicly for dealing with my situation when I was scheduled before, and my uh, minister of music at my church broke her leg, and I had to take over. So I'm sorry that I delayed this night, but I'm so glad that it's happened, and look yeah. forward to hearing you more and talking with you again. Okay, Don. Thank you so very much, Rachel, and you take care, and God bless. God bless and uh, happy, happy delayed, belated New Year to you and your family. Thank you very much. The same to you. I hope it's a prosperous and happy year Thank to everyone you. out there listening. God bless. Thank you, and good night. Good night. All righty. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Well, what a wonderful, wonderful interview that was. And uh, for those of you who may have joined us a little bit late, uh, we have been talking tonight with Rachel Oliver Cobbin. She was the former lead female singer, one of the, the female singers for Atlantic Star. But um, as you heard, she um, she was with Atlantic Star the longest of any of the female leads that they had. And, uh, and I learned something I didn't know tonight. But... Rachel is also a longtime friend. We went to high school and middle school together, grew up together, um, and I just kind of watched her career as she started, you know, from early, early beginnings. Um, I knew in school that she was going to go places and go very far in life because she just had that it factor, as we say in this day and time. Um, Rachel is absolutely beautiful. She has a beautiful voice, uh, and for those of you listening from the beginning tonight, you got to hear just a little snippet of that voice. But I can tell you, if you really want to hear um, what she did with Atlantic Star, there's two songs that you can really hear her voice. One is uh, Masterpiece um, from the Love Crazy album that they put out. Um, and that's when she came on board with Atlantic Star was when they were beginning to work on that album. Um, and then in the Home Alone 2 soundtrack, um, Atlantic Star does a rendition of Silver Bells, and she has a solo part in that. So she has an absolutely beautiful voice. Um, as a matter of fact, one thing we didn't hit on tonight was she was also our high school um, beauty queen as well. She was um, uh, she won the the pageant uh, the year that she was in it, so which was to no one's surprise. She she's just a delight, and um, and as I said, it was no exaggeration on air tonight. She's exactly the same way today as she was. <laughs> almost 30-some years ago. I'm really telling my age now, um, but that is so true. So um, it has just been a wonderful interview, and I uh, certainly hope that you all enjoyed it as well. And uh, just to bring you up to speed, we've got a few announcements. Um, got a couple of new things for 2013, if um, you've not heard. One thing that we've implemented is we've updated our website. We've got some new pages we've added. Um, one that I'm announcing tonight on the show is I've added a fan page. And basically what I'm asking is if you have pictures or stories with your favorite um, celebrity or rather musical artist, you know, it can be an indie artist, it can be, you know, a famous mainstream music artist, um, you know, Brush With Greatness, you've got autograph signed memorabilia that you have pictures of, anything like that that you'd like to um, send in to us, you can email it to us at music at thejamandgbox.com. And uh, we're going to create a little fan page because we want the fans to start being an interactive part of our website. And uh, so we welcome that. So just send it in. We'll review it, and uh, we'll get the content on the site. And uh, we're glad to do that. Also, we have created a YouTube channel for our show. And basically what we're doing is every time we have an interview, like tonight, um, I will create a, a video and upload it to YouTube so that it can reach the YouTube audience. Um, as always, you can always download the podcast um, from here and iTunes, um, from here being Blog Talk Radio um, or iTunes. But, you know, at YouTube, you can view the, um, the video uh, that accompanies the um, interview. So, you know, check it out. It's, um, our YouTube channel is The Jam and Juke Box. And so we'd love for you to check it out, subscribe to it, and that way every time new content is added, um, you know, you'll get an update about that. We're trying to get all the interviews we've done uh, close to 75 now um, since we've been on air in July. So it's a slow process. I wish it was, you know, the snap of the finger that it all be done, but it's a very slow process because yours truly is doing every single one. So um, but anyway, uh, just, you know, follow us on Twitter. If you're not a, one of our followers, we, you can follow us at Jammin' Jukebox to stay up to date on all the guests we have coming. And, um and any other announcements that we may have. And coming up, 
uh, let's see, this week we've got a couple more artists that are going to be with us. We have a uh, indie artist, pop indie artist by the name of Tash, T-A-S-H, and she's going to be with us on Thursday night at 7 p.m. Eastern. And also, coming on Friday night, we have a 14-year-old from the Philippines. His name is uh, Rainey, and uh, he has broke into the American music scene with a really, really good um, breakout song. So um, it's called So Beautiful, and uh, we debuted it on our Indie Artist Showcase last weekend, and it is a really great song. And uh, he doesn't even sound 14, I must tell you, but he's currently working with a singer producer, songwriter, Jay Bellamy, right now on a brand new album that's going to be coming out uh, this year. So um, we'll be talking with him and finding out all about that. So uh, just um, stay in touch with us, and uh, we will keep you up to date on everything we have coming. But um, in the meantime, enjoy the rest of your night and your week, and uh, we will certainly be right back here Thursday night, 7 p.m. Eastern. And this is the JMNG Box Radio Show. Thank you so much for being here, everyone, and have a great evening, and good night. Tonight's show has been brought to you by One Taste of Main Street Cake Shop Baked from scratch custom made cakes and cupcakes And you'll be hooked Every cake is made to order with only the finest and freshest ingredients This is no ordinary bakery Cakes are never pre-made Main Street Cake Shop is in demand Having provided cakes and cupcakes for numerous prestigious events Bridal fairs and venues Owned and operated by April Murray, she has garnered many awards for not only her exquisite cake designs, but also for their incredible taste. If you're looking for a cake for any occasion, or cupcakes in a variety of flavors, then Main Street Cake Shop is the place. Visit them on the web at MainStreetCakeShop.com.